right. Well, let's talk about John Schnepp's movie. How about uh, it? The, like, the, uh, the Death the, the, of Superman the, Lives. I almost got yeah, it it's wrong. It's called The Death of Superman mm-hmm. Lives. What happened? I made it with my fiance, Holly Payne. We mm-hmm. spent like three years. When are you guys getting married? Uh, sometime in the near future. Nice. You know, uh, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was quite a journey. Uh, it was just based off of like an uh, I just had this. I was collecting footage, you know, online of the Superman Lives thing, and I was like, mm-hmm. "There's got to be something to this." I always felt, you know, that that's the one that was the most maligned, yet the 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 easiest one to throw as a throwaway. Like, look at Nick Cage, you know, well, the f- Nick Cage now, and then you're like that one picture that got released where he's like half eyed and he's like looks like he's wearing a doll outfit or it's just it's just a really bad photo and to uh to let our fans know that are not as familiar with the story is it was a superman movie starring nicholas cage and directed by tim burton mm-hmm. that's what was going to happen yeah and there was like an original screenplay by kevin smith so there was like this mm-hmm. whole kind of lore that followed it from its 96 97 and ultimately when it got closed down in 98 and then you know years later some of the art got released online even years after that, some videos of the weird light up suit went, went right. on to YouTube. Mm-hmm. And years later after that, that's when I was like, I'd been collecting stuff just as my own personal, like pimp my su- Superman suit that had yeah, all these weird yeah, yeah, moving with, lights, with on, the weird it. lights yeah. on it. I just had a folder on my desktop and I was just like one of those things whenever I'd take a break or whatever, I'd be like, eh, see if there's any more Superman concept art, just mm-hmm. my own geek thing that I would do amongst other, like we all have our own little sure. like things. Oh, I wonder about that. Remember that movie you research it or whatever. So, and it became a thing. And then, I was hanging out with some friends and they were like, hey, that sounds like you know a lot about it. Sounds interesting. Why don't you make a documentary? I had just done a Kickstarter the year before uh, for uh, the Grim Fairy Tales animated thing I was doing. So mm-hmm. it was like, I'll give it a shot. You know, and it took me about two months after some people were like, you should try that. I was like, nah. And then I thought about it. I was like, no one else is going to make this. No one would, would make it. And I was like, that to me was more of a challenge. Like, I wonder if there is something there. So I launched this Kickstarter. And then Holly and I worked on this film for two and a half years. We... We got all the interviews. It took so long to get interviews. Everyone really, a like, documentary took a long time. That's so weird. It is it's very strange. You need, <laughs> do you mean you need to talk to real people without a script? Yeah, it's yeah. like, <laughs> and they don't get paid. It was like one of those things where you're like literally asking people to tell their story about a failed project. So that's that was the hard the hardest part. And you know, mm-hmm. to get Tim Burton was literally one of the hardest parts because he's super busy. Probably it was incredibly, and as we know, it was a very painful experience for him. He didn't want to talk about it. But as we kept moving forward with our doc, he was aware of it. And then eventually I was able to contact a few people who were able to contact other people who put me in touch with him. Then Holly and I went out to England and, and met him. Oh, wow. We had to go fly out to England just to meet him to see if he wanted to do the movie. But we were like, we're doing it. We're going out there. Right. And he liked us. And then we shot the interview like two days later. And then literally we had gotten Kevin Smith like the 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 two weeks beforehand. And he was also really hard because he's super busy. So it's right. not like people are always like, he would be really easy to get because he loves to talk. It's like well, on his own time of talk about what he wants. And when it's he's like, getting paid. Well, I mean, right. Or, or yeah. whatever. It was just like he's a busy guy. It's not yeah. like you just walk up to him and be like, hey, let's shoot this interview. So uh, and he was incredibly awesome to, to meet mm-hmm. and hang out with. And so mm-hmm. that was kind of the magic of that and putting it all together. And and then finally, like finally getting it finished, we went and screened it and we got picked up by Showtime and we went all around the world and had mm-hmm. amazing screenings. And then today it's funny that I'm on the show this morning. Holly sent me an email saying, would you believe this? And it's Nick Cage got cast to play Superman in a DC animated film that's coming out July 28th. It's called Teen Titans Go. And he's playing the voice of Superman. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. And I just, I literally, and of course, every single outlet all across the internet is carrying pictures of photos that we uncovered. So right. they're photos that oh, we that's... actually took of Nick Cage as Superman. Like all those photos that you see did not exist before our film because they were like in the Raiders of the Lost Ark tomb. Of Tim <laughs> <Right. Burton. laughs> and literally Holly and I uncovered it. Mm-hmm. And for the first time, we we're like, when we first saw that footage of Tim Burton and Nicolas Cage talking with, with, Bur- with Tim, I'm sorry, with Cage in this newer outfit, not wow. the one that you've seen those photos of, but if you've seen our film, you see the later iterations. And those are the photos that are all around the internet now where he's in a more traditional red, sure. white, you know, right, red and right. blue and yellow suit. Those are where you're, you're seeing talking to Tim and like the ideas that they had that they were going to try to do. That's what turned me around to be like, well, Cage is approaching it as an actor and as a character and the idea of being like a loner and being like the the last of his kind and approaching it like in a way that Superman still has never been done. 
that's what I thought was magical about it. And that Tim was going to try something different. He'd already done the dark and spooky stuff with Beetlejuice and Batman. Mm. And this was going to be that brighter kind of vision of Superman, which we still haven't gotten. So I feel like even 20 years later, that's why people were attracted when they see our film. That's why they see it multiple times and talk about it, because it captures the essence of what Superman still isn't. Right. And it feels like that's why it's like it's, even which is supposed which is what he's supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, so even though mm-hmm. people clown on him because he doesn't look like Superman, neither did Michael Keaton. He doesn't look like Batman. It's like it's right. such a weird thing. I always have issues with people who are like, he doesn't look like Superman. It's like you know, it's like nobody really looks like anybody. You know, it's like, I don't know what these idealized forms right. are supposed to be, but it's like actors take on roles, actors are masks, and it's like I feel like you're shortchanging yourself if you come at it from this like kind of surface level. So I've always approached it like that mm-hmm. with anything, any kind of movie that I see. We've talked d- about Superman before though. It's, it's it's that character is one of the hardest characters to do. And some people would argue, Mike Schmidt has said this, It's ne- he's Superman has never been done like correctly on the big screen, some people right. believe. You know, I, and, and what uh, you're saying is like, man, you're right. Like The like, animated movies, they've gotten them right. Well, right, I, yeah. I would argue mm-hmm. Superman's Christopher Reeve, the Superman, the movie yes. is the one it's done the closest. Right. And yeah. I recently saw it. At, they they were screening like a, I guess it's the 40th anniversary, or close mm-hmm. enough to it. There were a bunch mm-hmm. of cast members. Like McClure was there, and it was like oh, it was wow. cool to see it. And then we saw it projected, and it was a sold out. You know, it was at the at the Chinese theater, it was a sold out. And I was wow. the last minute. I was like, you know, I'm going. And I was like, mm-hmm. I was on the fence about it because I've seen it so many times. But I was like. Just to see it in the theater again and like relive it. Right. In, in the, when the music comes on, it's yeah, magic. Yeah. And Chris Marlon Brando. Yeah. Marlon mm-hmm. Brando, Chris Reeve, Gene Hackman. I mean, it's such a magical film. And it, I finally came to terms with the flying around the earth making right. stuff. Because it always bugged me. And then I was like, this is a fantasy film about a right. dude who can fly and do all these crazy from things. From another planet. From another planet. Mm-hmm. And I always had a beef with him. Like, well, he f- goes back in time, changes time. And it's like, I finally realized it's wish fulfillment. It's like, he, he can save everyone, but he couldn't save his dad on Earth. And now he, could, he couldn't save his, the girl that he loves. So he's like, screw it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to, mm-hmm. you know. So it's that kind of thing. Like, it was like, no, I'm, I can change. I can make a difference. It's, right. If you look at it like a, a morality tale, it's like any grim fairy tales is like, well, I wouldn't go in that back alley because bad things are going to happen. Right. Like right. any of those, like <laughs> these, like, you know, little after school special type things. It's, Superman was the same thing. It's like telling you, like, to believe in something. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, where, I, that's I finally came to terms now, with. Now, I, the one question I had is because you you kind of um, you're using a lot of things that Warner Brothers owns. Did sure. you run into any legal issues? No, because it's a documentary. I mean, mm-hmm. and there's also I mean, we went through a, a whole bunch of lawyers who are fair use lawyers, and you learn the what fair use is and what you can use and what right. you can't use. You can use if you're if you're transforming the media, you can actually use clips from other movies. You just can't show the clip. You can't show a here's a five minute scene from, you know, Justice oh, right. League. You can't or even mm-hmm. a, here's a ten, here's a 30 second scene from Justice League and then run that 30 second clip because you don't own that clip. Mm-hmm. What you can do is talk about the clip and why that clip references or means something to this other thing that you're talking about directly paralleling and then transforming the media. So that is that's what we learned is that now can you show the clip as you're talking about yes, it? Or you but can't? it has to it has to. That's the key is you can't overuse clips. Mm -hmm. There's a limited amount of time and and how much of a movie you can use. There's all these like little, little keys. Fair use rules. Yeah, there's rules. Mm -hmm. And as long as you can have all those cleared by lawyers, um, you're, you're good. And that's how I felt about it. It was like, look, you know, we're not out to rip anyone off. We're telling a story. Right. You know, and it's like I've never claimed and no one's claimed anyone who's made the film was like, we're not we don't own. So remember, we're like telling this documentary about these filmmakers and the situation that they had with Warner Brothers mm-hmm. in D.C. and the, the trying to make this film. So mm-hmm. where can people see it now? Uh, right now, it was on Showtime. It just went off Showtime at the end of 2017. So right now you can go to TDO SLWH dot com. That's TDO SLWH dot com. That's the death of Superman lives. What happened? But just the first letter of everything. And go there. You could rent the film. We have mm. it as a digital rental, or you could buy the Blu-ray, which is the film and eight hours of extras. Like Ooh, oh, wow. me and Kevin Smith just nerding out about comic books. <laughs> All the art directors, John Peters talking about his his work on Batman, and just like an hour long extra interview with John Peters. Every single person we interviewed, there's extras like Tim Burton's feelings about all of his films, mm-hmm. told in like one word, like what did you think about this? Like some fun stuff. 
that are, you know, just extras and being a big nerd like yourselves. Like I love yeah. all the extras that you See, get on Blu-ray yeah. and I'm Absolutely. very disappointed whenever it's like just the trailer, <clears throat> maybe I won't buy it. You know, <laughs> like really literally that, that yeah. makes me like, oh, it's a Blu-ray. That was kind of the whole anything. point of DVDs and Blu-rays yes. is getting all the extras. That was the point. And now that's diminished because of, of streaming. But I feel like now things are starting to roll back around where people actually want to see behind the scenes on every movie. Yes. It's yeah. so interesting to even like a film like X-Men Dark Phoenix, I would love to see an hour long, the process of Simon Kinberg going from a writer producer to directing. Mm -hmm. You know, like this is yeah, his first yeah, film, yeah. technically right. actually directing something that he's written all these different movies. I'm using that as an example, but so our Blu-ray is available and uh, we're, we're talking to different streaming services right now to resell the film. So we're probably gonna land with one of, you know, one of the, the you know, the streaming services that you know. Uh, in the next few months. But right now, the only place you can see it is on our website, tdoslwh.com, and you can either buy a digital copy, and that's just instantly buy it, you watch it right on your computer, or you could buy the Blu-ray and you'll get it in like two and a half weeks. Cause you know, Holly and I are the only people who are shipping it. It's our film. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's a, yeah, so that's, a, that's where you can see the film. And uh, it, was such a, it was such a kick to see that Nick Cage finally got to realize this dream that he's yeah. had for over to 30, 40 years to yeah. play Superman. And then he almost was Superman. And that's the film that got away. So you, a lot of things that you're seeing now, like Brainiac is in Krypton. Mm -hmm. And you see these images, art images, that they got directly from not just the comic book, but the development of, over time, the Brainiac character from the Superman Lives with the skull ship and stuff like that. They, mm -hmm. There's certain things where they're like, oh, what about this? And you know, that's the one thing when characters are being developed over time. All these different kinds of characters have been in different forms of like, well, we're going to make this movie and then it falls apart. Well, what worked? What did we have design wise? And that carries over to the next movie. Right. That, that makes sense. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you'll see like little things, even in Man of Steel, that were from Superman Lives or from all these different iterations of Superman. So, try to reuse assets. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. They spent money. That's what they got to do. Cool. And it makes yep. sense. So hats off to Nick Cage and hats off to the Warner Brothers animation team for actually making this a reality. And I think it's kind of cool because it's like a lot of people who would like would, you know, joke about it. Most people who joke about it haven't seen the doc. That's the, usually when I'm at a comic con or something, come, someone comes up to me and they're like, I think Nick Cage would have been stupid. I'm like, you yeah, haven't seen my documentary. You know, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I instantly yeah. know it's like Holly too. She's like, if anybody comes up to her and says that she knows, she's like, you haven't seen the doc. You haven't seen our documentary. Right. So it's sort of one of those things where once you've seen it, then you could see the other side to it. Then I'll, even some people, I wouldn't have, I don't, I still don't want to see him as Superman, but I get it. So it's like, that's right, the, yeah. com, the walk away is usually like either the for it or uh, the get it. I wonder if Tim Burton would have given him dialogue. <laughs> well, check well, it out guys. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's yeah. a cool doc and it's, it's something that's, it's, it's <clears> such <throat> great nerd folklore and it's such yes. a great use of the medium of, of documentaries. Oh, let me let me also pimp uh, where you can buy the film and get me to sign it is at WonderCon. I've got a oh, booth okay. at booth, booth 121. That's in a week and a half uh, at Anaheim. WonderCon, oh, I'll be there and I'll be Holly will be there. We'll be signing our Blu-rays. I'll be signing my Slayer comics. I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I've been working on that we'll be signing so and selling. So you could buy the Blu-ray there and you don't have to go th you know through the mail process, which is, you know, you got to wait a couple weeks. That's and you get an works. autograph and then yeah. take a po photo with John and, and post it on uh, online and tag us. Yes. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. uh